Today we are going to be running 12 huge games on the brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro with the base M4 chip. So this chip has 10 CPU cores with 4 performance cores and 6 efficiency cores. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM and 10 GPU cores. And the level of gaming performance on this base level chip is actually very impressive. So today we're going to be testing out a bunch of native Mac games and we're also going to be running many AAA Windows titles through the translation layer crossover. So the first game that we're looking at is Lies of P and this is a Souls-like game set in a Pinocchio steampunk universe and it's surprisingly well optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. So here we're running the game at 1080p high and we have Metal FX upscaling set to quality mode. So technically this is running in a lower resolution and then being upscaled but we're getting a surprisingly good frame rate considering how good the game looks. So here what I've done is I've kept the same graphics preset set to high and I've bumped up the resolution to 1440p. We're not quite hitting 60fps, we're getting about 45. And here what I've done is I've set the preset to medium and we're getting very close to a solid 60 and all you need to do is turn down one or two more settings to get 60 frames per second which you probably want because this is a very precise timed game. Next up we are looking at the classic turn-based strategy 4x game Civilization 6. So yes the sequel Civilization 7 is going to be released on Mac in the future however for now you can play Civilization 6 and its huge plethora of DLCs. So of course in the early stages of this game we're going to get very decent frame rates we're running this at 1440 p at default graphics settings and we're getting over 100 fps but we've barely discovered any parts of the map but here in the benchmark section you can see more detail of what the game would look like if it was fully populated and here we're getting a good 50 to 60 fps which is not too bad considering that this is a relatively high resolution and the turns can be quite demanding on the gpu and the cpu next we're looking at death stranding so definitely one of the most polished and graphically impressive games that you can play on the apple silicon mac and it's been natively optimized for the M series chip and it can pretty much be adapted to virtually any resolution and graphical setting you throw at it. Here I'm just showing you what 1440p very high looks like we're getting about 40 to 45 fps and here under the medium graphics preset we're getting really close to 60 to 70 fps which isn't too bad. So the Mac compatible version of this game is only available on the Mac App Store was actually on sale right now so make sure to check it out for one of the best titles that you can play on Apple Silicon hardware. So next up we are looking at the game League of Legends. So this is a Mac port of the game and we're making use of a hidden feature where you edit a config file in order to enable the Metal Graphics API which makes the game run much faster and we're running it at 1440p at very high graphics preset. And here we're getting about 65 to 70 FPS on the Aram game mode. So of course League of Legends is a very competitive game and often players want to play at extremely high frame rates and this is definitely possible on the base M4. So here turn the graphics settings down to very low and we're getting a frame rate of over 200 fps which i probably think is plenty for anyone so next up i had two super chat requests to look at two related games that is old school's runescape and runescape 3. so this is old school runescape and this is the mac port of the game it still uses OpenGL, i believe there is no metal hud on the top right hand corner so we're tracking the frame rate using the steam inbuilt frame rate counter so here at 1440p we're getting about 150 to 200 fps and runescape 3 the modern version of runescape definitely looks a lot better than old school runescape however it's not particularly well optimized and appears to still use opengl on tutorial island the actual frame rate is okay but really seems to drag when you go out on town so 1440p medium only gives us about 20 to 25 fps whereas 1440p low is giving us a better frame rate here it's a shame that this game isn't more well optimized as it's such an old title next up we are looking at world of tanks the tank multiplayer online game so this has a mac port but technically it's actually a windows game in a crossover code weavers bottle so i believe that this bottle is actually quite old it's based on something like crossover 21 or 22 so here i'm using the hd client and we're running the game in 1440p at the medium graphics preset and we're not doing too badly. At this graphics settings we're getting about 45 to 60 fps. And speaking of Windows gaming on a Mac we are now running Cyberpunk 2077 through crossover preview. So this is a Windows translation layer which allows us to run advanced DirectX 12 titles like Cyberpunk 2077 which is possible now even though there is actually going to be a native ARM Mac port of Cyberpunk coming out early in 2025. So here we're playing at 1080 
1080p at the high graphics preset. So generally speaking, performance is pretty good on the base M4, hovering around the 30 FPS mark. So I was told by stream chat that this is actually pretty good performance. However, if you wanted to get a higher frame rate, easily turn this down to performance mode or ultra performance mode using FSR. Most importantly, frame time is pretty good. There are no major visual bugs. So this remains a very playable game until the native Mac port comes out. So the next game that we're looking at is Silent Hill 2, the remake by Bluebird Team. This was released just last month on Windows and we're playing this through the crossover preview translation layer. So there is the option here to run this in DirectX 12 mode, but DirectX 11 performs a lot better. In order to get a playable performance, we needed to turn this down to low quality preset and then turn FSR on pretty aggressively. Performance mode renders the game at a low resolution and it upscales it using algorithms, which doesn't make the game look the best. However, it's still pretty impressive that a graphically intensive Windows game that was released pretty recently can actually run on an Apple Silicon Mac through translation layers. Here we can see that the cutscenes are locked at 30 FPS. So this still looks pretty good. And in normal gameplay, we're seeing about 30 to 35 FPS. I think the fog is really helping the rendering distance issues just like it did in the original game. Anyway, it's good to see that this is actually playable on the base M4 chip. So the next game that we're looking at is Tekken 8. So when you first load up this advanced Windows game through crossover preview, you're gonna get quite a lot of stuttering. So that's all the shaders and animations caching. But after after a while they'll all smooth out. Here we're getting a pretty decent frame rate, it's 1080p running at the high graphics preset. Now here I'm actually going to be playing a game online, so this is actually possible using crossover preview. Here I've actually lowered the settings to medium in order to be more competitive and it seems to run okay. We're getting about 60 FPS which is basically the cap for this game and what you need to be able to play properly. So take with this what you will. When you finish a match it's actually going to downgrade your graphics level in order to get a better frame rate on multiplayer. Here it's actually pushed us down to low settings which still makes the game look pretty good and a little bit more playable online. So this game that we're looking at is Hellblade 2 Senua's Saga. So this is again being run through crossover. And even though the game itself is one of the most visually stunning games that you can play on any system, here on the base M4 Pro, we're not getting that good of performance considering that this is the lower end M series chip. Nevertheless, we're able to achieve a frame rate that's close to 30 FPS. So it hovers between about 25 to 35 FPS. And this was achievable by turning all of the graphics settings to low and turning up the FSR settings to performance mode, which is quite aggressive. And lastly, we're going to be looking at Genshin Impact. So this very popular mobile title is on iPhone and iPad, but there is no official Mac port. This is despite the fact that it should technically be fully compatible, but Hoyoverse have decided not to publish a Mac port over the last few years. However, there are multiple unofficial ways to actually run this on Apple Silicon Mac hardware. These include running through parallels, running through crossover. You can silo the mobile decrypted app using play cover. However, this method is going to be running something called yet another anime game launcher or YAAG. And this is basically a custom wine wrapper similar to running the game through crossover, but it has its own specific tweaks, as well as support for a new direct X2 metal translation there called DXMT, also created by the author of YAGL. Anyway, the game itself being played through this translation there manages to run pretty well. We're running at the high graphics preset at 1440p, and the game is actually capped at 60 frames per second, but we're managing to run very close to that at this graphics preset. And it's a shame that we don't have a fully native port, as this could easily be done done by the publisher if they chose to. They actually published plenty of other games on macOS. For example, Honkai Third Impact managed to get a Mac port recently. Anyway, here's to hoping that something happens in the future because this is a really popular title for macOS. Anyway, I hope you found this video about the MacBook Pro with the base M4 Mac chip interesting. I'll be covering the base M4 iMac in the next stream and video, so make sure to check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.